everybody, it's Michelle here with Angel Souls and we're going to be doing a July 2023 overview and then I will pull a card for each individual sign. But let's talk about that for a second. When we talk about angelic work, time is not linear, okay? The only reason why I'm doing it this way is because people are so used to it. <laughs> and angelic messaging is so important right now and it's getting buried by other types of spiritual practices. So. We'll go ahead and do this. If you want to take that approach, you can watch for your sun, moon, and rising. And we'll see what's going on. I do want to pause here for a second because there's already messages coming in. I have Archangel Gabriel in here and some other angelic energies. July. They're saying that there are layers in the energetic field, right? And for individuals depending on your chart and what's going on in that. I'm not an astrologer, but I'm just saying that's what people are used to. This can be a really nice time for you. Collectively, there will be things going on out in the world. So by the time we get up to the 1010 portal coming up in just three months, and we'll talk about that here in a minute, the world is not going to look the same. And what is fueling this, I'm hearing, is that people who are completely run on power just for the sake of power, they're losing that. And so now they're going to go into an act of desperation. You know, power is so connected to their identity that they become ruthless. Like if they start to lose that power, they'd rather go out, just go out and take everybody with them, then have to backtrack, admit they're wrong, any of that stuff. So we might be seeing some acts of desperation by people in power to maintain their power. They are panicking. What this will also do is this will start, you know, revving up the game for regular people to start stressing even more about money. The banking system you know are we gonna get help are we not gonna get help you know all that kind of stuff so that's why I'm saying really imperative that you be spiritually ready now let's talk about that 1010 portal energy portal happens obviously every October and it's drastic endings drastic now last year people waited until a few days before the 1010 portal and started lining up for readings and I had more than I could possibly handle. <laughs> so I want to just put this message out there. Angelic messaging, angelic work, tuning into angelic frequency is imperative right now. All right. So if you want to get a reading with me and you feel like I am the angelic practitioner you would like to work with, please don't wait. Please get your readings now. Angel Souls 444 dot com when it comes the fall i'm not going to be running promos okay i'm doing some summer promos right now as of the recording of this and i'm recording on july 3rd i'm getting it up a few days late but whatever <laughs> um i do have a code that is active for only a short period of time after this goes up so please keep that in mind if you watch this at the end of the month and you're like the code doesn't work it's because it was only available for a short period of time. So that code is ANGEL20. You get 20% off of a standard reading request. If you want to keep up with those promos, you have to be watching me on the community tab on my YouTube channel. Okay, that's where I put all updates, promos, live events, if I have those going on. Um, if I get a hit on something and I feel like, especially if I feel like, hey, I woke up and I'm not feeling great about California or I'm not feeling great about the Pacific. I feel like there could be an earthquake or something. I will put that up on the community tab. So make sure you're watching that. Always check the description box. That's where all the stuff is as well if you forget the website, okay? So please do not wait to prepare spiritually for that 1010 portal. What can that look like? It can look like relationships ending um, or you get a new relationship. It's drastic changes, but only if you haven't been listening, right? So for those of you who have already been doing a lot of the work, I mean, it could still take any of us by surprise, right? But for if you've been doing the work 
by the time something comes around, if you end up losing a job, you saw it coming, right? It was not a shock to you that that occurred. Or if, you know, you have a breakup or something like that, it was not something that was just like out of left field, okay? So there is that, the prep, get your readings now, that way you can, whatever is coming up for you, you can work on it and you have time to process it before that portal starts happening. It peaks on that day, but the effects can go on and on, all right? So there's that angelsouls444.com. If you see this right as it's getting posted, you can use Angel20 on my website to get 20% off of a standard reading. Okay, so I think I covered all of that stuff. And, you know, too, like the whole 1010 portal stuff, you know, that wasn't on my radar either until today. And I was just talking to somebody last night about the 1010 portal. I was like, oh, yeah. And then I woke up this morning. I was like, yeah, you should be telling people about that. <laughs> so here we go. Let's get some cards. An overview for the month of July. Conflict. I'm telling you, this could be conflict that is ramping up in certain regions of the world. I have yet to record the weekly okay I will do that right after this I don't feel good about the first week first week and a half of July I think again that power struggle um, somebody doesn't feel like they're being taken seriously so they're gonna go out there and try to you know do something this could be awful this could be something that is absolutely insane I also want to say again thank you the person knows who they are but I just had this beautiful conversation with somebody last night and um, there was a message for this person having to do with the collective, but I want to share it here as well. There was a question about lockdowns. Would there be another potential lockdown? The answer is yes. And it came through very crystal clear. And I heard fallout chemicals. So it might be about air quality. It might be, I don't know. I don't know if this, well, I know it's man-made. I know it's induced, okay? But, um... There, there could be that as well. So energetically, we can always change anything. That is why it is imperative that you be working on this right now. And not just, I mean, God love all the tarot readers out there, the psychic readers, the astrologers. You know, they have gifts. They're, if they're ethical, they're really contributing in a beautiful way. The problem is, is that when people get like the, and we'll talk about the stingy hit you know, it, it's thrilling, it's entertaining, and then you kind of let it drop off. You don't take the message seriously, perhaps, or you're just hung up on what's going to happen, not how to deal with it if it does occur. And remember, that's the thing with energy. It's always shifting. It is contingent upon human free will. So it may play out. It may not play out, right? We have nothing set in stone, so we can change things by working on it. So please do not diminish how important angelic work is. Angels guide you on how to live your fullest potential, how to be in a pure state and not be lured in by things of the stingy energy. I think that's so funny. Um, I think of people who cheat. You know, it's the thrill of the deception and that that's a dark energy, all right? And when people try to twist things, twist that narrative and say, oh, you're judgmental, Energy is energy, honey. I didn't make the rules, okay? <laughs> like, you want to be mad, be mad at yourself. But really having to stop and ask, you know, what do I get out of being manipulative? What do I get out of, you know, a lot of people will do that because they want to feel like they're in control. So they will, if they're functioning from a dark space, a conflicted internal conflict, that's what this could be too. We might be seeing a lot of people acting out because they have their own internal conflict going on. But they want to pinpoint people's vulnerabilities so they can play on those, make you feel shame, make you feel guilt, and they get a charge out of that, okay? They get the stingy energy. It's like a jolt that might make them feel alive. Why am I telling you that? Uh, you need to pay attention to it because if you're doing it, you need to catch that, <laughs> okay? Um, this is that kind of thing where if it's peaceful and lovely and beautiful, it's not as interesting, people out there who always want the bad boy okay all right so the conflict there's going to be worldwide conflict of course we see what's going on in France 
I look for that to continue. I look for there to be much more of that and the internal conflict as well. Ancient Wisdom Crystal, Ancient Wisdom. This feels like getting back to basics and it's also, yeah, I'm hearing that a lot of us are going to discover the way we've approached things does not serve us at all. Being distracted, you know, again, manipulation, getting pulled into manipulative games. If you've ever had somebody messing with you and you get upset, that's what they wanted. That's how they're getting their zing. They, they like that. They're getting their charge out of that. That is someone who's not connected into the light. We can all be carriers of light unless we deny that within ourselves. That's what this is teaching us. Tapping back into that inner wisdom, not so that you can get one over on someone or get revenge or anything of the sort, but realizing what takes your energy. Um, this is on a very deep level. Don't worry about the surface level so much, okay? I mean, unless you're in certain regions of the world, if you feel like you need to get out, then get out. But um, this is saying it's time to get back to basics. All right, rhodochrosite acceptance. And I also want to say, this feels like accepting responsibility. And a lot of people will not do that. They will not take accountability for their life choices. They will not take accountability for their healing. And this feels like, you know, part of this wisdom. I'm not a big fan of don't engage. I think it's self-righteous when people say it. And it does discourage people from setting boundaries, okay? So there's a difference between just pretend like it's not happening and diffusing the situation or protecting yourself enough so that if someone is playing games with you, it doesn't affect you, it doesn't steal your energy. But this has to do with part of that wisdom is allowing, giving people space to be who they are and not and accepting them for who they are, not trying to change them and make them who you want them to be, right? So as we go in to the rest of this year, 2023 into 2024, there is a massive splitting of dimensions. Okay, let's talk about that for a second. The third and fourth dimension collapsed into one another or compressed into one another back around 2012. This is what a lot of us thought was going to be the end of the world Obviously, the Mayan tradition, you know, people had a misunderstanding of that, right? So it was a whole thing. It was like a Y2K kind of moment. But essentially, those energies compressed into one another. And then in the years following, we suddenly saw a lot of people coming out and saying, I believe in ghosts. I believe in aliens. I believe. Why? Because they, they were more open, right? But here's the freaky thing that happened. If you saw or started to experience more of the fourth dimensional energy, that's why. It was closer. So you might have sensed something in the room with you. Maybe you didn't see it, but you sensed something was going by. And it was weird. And guess what? It was probably weird for the fourth dimensional people too. <laughs> right? Like, what the heck was that? But this is where we also saw a lot of esoteric arts that typically tap into fourth dimensional energies suddenly be on the rise, suddenly be popular. And it was a beautiful thing at first until people started, um, it, it, like the esoteric arts really started to get watered down. Pretty much anybody could pick up a tarot deck and just make up whatever and <sighs> be ethical, okay? <laughs> know what you're doing before you get out there because people are taking that, they're opening their energy to that messaging and if you're not ethical, not only are you harming them or potentially harming them or interfering with their human free will, uh, there's going to be backlash on that. Okay, for sure. We got another message. Okay, sorry. So um, <laughs> uh, there's a delivering of uh, what we would describe or some traditions would describe as karma. So the balancing of the universe. This month feels like for some of you watching this, Karma is being delivered, okay? So some of you are not going to like that. And some of you are not, like you're receiving good karma, but you don't like, it's almost like being delivered by the person who harmed you in the first place. That's not everybody. Do not freak out, okay? If you had this horrible situation with a person, 
You do not need to invite them back into your life. That's not what we're saying. But let's say you had a friend who super self-centered, expected you to just, you know, live for them, whatever, whatever. And now they have to come serve you in some way. And you might be like, nah, I don't want nothing to do. I don't want nothing you have to give, <laughs> right? But um, they might be very insistent. There's almost like a, an urgency behind, no, let me do this for you. No, let me give this to you. Why? Karma. They have to pay off their karma. Now, they may not be, that's just a sliver of their karma, okay? It's very situational. It's very minute. But if some of you experience someone coming back from the past and they're like, hey, I want to make amends, you have to discern whether that's safe for you or not, whether you're in the mental and emotional space to do that. You do not need to reunite with anybody. Okay, but I'm, I'm addressing this because it might feel really weird and it might take some of your energy because it's going to be so perplexing. You might be really focused on what the heck was that? <laughs> like, why, why did they come back around after all these years? They may not be able to articulate it as such. They may have no understanding of it. They just know um, that they have to do some sort of delivering to you for some of you. That might be part of the acceptance too. Um, as long as, again, as long as somebody wasn't, you know, awful and abusive, like I was saying, like a friend might come back and go, no, I want to do this for you or I want let them. Okay. If you feel like it's safe, please be discerning. You are, be accountable for your own actions. Okay. That's part of that acceptance. Awakening crystal emotional healing. See, this is what's going on here. <laughs> We're sort of untying ourselves from, um, they're saying glitching, past glitching. So some things started kind of going off the rails a little bit. And now we're having to recover, rejuvenate. Again, this is what benefit the angels, your guardian angels bring to you. They help you rejuvenate where your energy has been sort of siphoned out. Uh, if someone is taking advantage of you, for example, uh, the angels will help you awaken to that. And as painful as it could be to want, you know, to not want to admit to have to admit that to yourself, you know you have to look at that and, and change. So again, coming back to that, they're bringing us back to the splitting of these timelines. So some, not timelines, dimensions. Some people will go into a fifth dimensional energy, which is a very heart-centered energy. And some people will stay in 3D. And I want to give a little PSA here. If you say, I'm in 5D, my friends and family, they're still in 3D and they just will not come with me. You're delusional. Did you not hear that? You're delusional. Because no one who's truly in fifth dimensional energy would say such a thing. It's heart-centered energy. You would love and accept where they are, who they are, as they are. You would not try to force. You would offer. And if they did not want to accept it, you know, it's almost like having this capability of seeing the wisdom in everything. Accepting that they have their own soul's contract to finish out. And you don't have any say over that. So if you are taking that standpoint, if you even think that, you're not in 5D. Okay, so now I'm going to break it down into the astrological signs. Okay, Aries, for you we have fire, agate, creativity. This is absolutely beautiful for you. This, I would say, bring your attention to the sacral chakra. Be working with Archangel Gabriel and finding a way, finding a creative outlet, okay? And if you tune into the sacral chakra, a lot of people who are alive on this planet right now need to work on their sacral, okay? It's ruling a lot of different things, but um, healing that, allowing it to be healed, and seeing where there are Creative life force blocks. Is that an old idea? Is it something that someone has manipulated and tried to put into you so that you believe certain things about yourself so they could control you? Fire agate has this energy of quickness, okay? <laughs> sort of like I recognize what this is now. I, you know, and I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm not for the obstacles anymore. Your big challenge this month would be to not take a scorched earth approach. No, don't do that, okay? That would be a waste of energy. It goes into the darker kind of stuff. We don't need that. We don't need it, okay? 
<laughs> so this is more of a fire uh, agate energy, the side of it, of being a go-getter. I'm going to go after what I want. I'm going to detox from the messaging that I once grew up with. All right. So for Taurus, we have Soul Connection Crystal Lovers. Taurus, this could be a really profound time of partnership for you. Soul Connection Partnership. So this, if you watch the general part, you know, someone wants to help you. Someone wants to come along and even love you. All right. <laughs> for sure. Now, if you say, well, I already have a partner, whatever, whatever, this, this is helping you to understand just how profound that partnership is or how valuable it is. If you've been putting more focus on work and less on the partner, you equalize that this month, okay? But for those of you who are single, yes, this is someone coming in, 100%, okay? <laughs> someone coming in. Your challenge, though, if you're single and someone's coming in, is to make sure that you're in a healed enough place that you are accepting the right type of love partner for you, not just accepting someone because you don't want to be single anymore, okay? But this is definitely someone, it's a partnership. This could be also, for some of you, an agent, you know, uh, I don't know, like an executive who sees you as talented and wants to promote you or something along those lines. But this is someone caring Someone you have a soul connection with, and this could turn into something really, really beautiful. Would that happen just in the confines of July 2023? No. <laughs> All right. So just keep that in mind. This just might be the beginning. All right. So Gemini, we have Opal Joy. Why is this coming up for you? You need to make room for this. So part of what is happening is constriction. Yeah, just feeling closed in. And a lot of things blocking you, getting in the way. There might have been a lot of uh, slowing down because you're sort of waiting on other people to make their decisions and figure out what they're doing. So this opens things up now. But this is also saying try not to overthink things. Try not to take things so seriously. It's okay to be joyful, playful. Just make sure that, you know, you're not being self-centered okay and I say that because like maybe you're getting into this joyful place but you're not reading the room right like you walk into a room where there was like a big argument and people are kind of going through a little bit of turmoil and you walk in you're like it's such a beautiful morning you know I mean that might have some <laughs> backlash for you so just you know again try to find something that you that brings you joy to engage in but read the room all right so for Cancer, Divine Temple Source. For all of you, this is connecting through the heart space, activating all the upper chakras, especially getting into the crown chakra and making sure that that is in good shape. I think if someone is very sensitive, if we're spiritual, you know, all of that, that might, that in the third eye, some people go over the top trying to open their third eye and then it gets all... Anyway, that's another time. But <laughs> the crown chakra, sometimes we end up neglecting that because we take for granted that it's just always open because we're so sensitive, we're still getting information. But reconnecting to source and, and really fine tuning and putting the focus on that, I think you're gonna get some pretty massive downloads here. But it's it would be downloads that help you activate your heart space, all right? So this could be bringing more compassion to yourself and to others. This could be going along with the general part of this message that was in the beginning. This is giving um, a message to not just take everything at face value. That's how I'll put that. Don't take everything at face value. Maybe don't be so quick to victimize yourself and point the finger at someone else when on a soul level, there was something that you were supposed to learn from one another, right? <laughs> so knowing that things are fulfilled, uh, some of you are making amends, okay, and trying to heal some emotional upset, but it's the downloads that's going to help you understand the situation, why it came to be, although that's more of an ego thing to try to figure that out, but you might get those answers. And uh, I just keep hearing to connect or reconnect in a pure way. So there it is 
for you all. So then we're going to move on to Leo. Fluorite learning. This is a deep lesson for you. I'm not going to lie. This is a little bit of kickback, a little bit of realizing, okay, I've been taking all of this energy and I'm focusing it in this direction because I was so sure that's where my identity was. I was so sure that that was my sense of self. And this is that kind of thing, and I've done this in my own life, where I always, I wanted to go explore the world, but then I would go sort of torture myself living in New York City, which is a great city, but I'm a small town girl. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't want to have to take the subway, right? I don't want rats running over my foot when I'm wearing sandals. That is a true story. That happened, okay? A rat the size of a cat ran over my foot. I felt... I'll spare you. I felt its tail. Anyway, um, its little feet, its little tail. I about died. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> you know, you're learning what truly makes you happy. And maybe that does mean taking a direction that is less glamorous. Okay, now Florida can be very abundant and prosperous as well. You, This is that kind of thing where, let's say you have a lot of creative pursuits. And because you're just in survival mode all the time, you haven't been able to devote any time to the things that maybe you really enjoy. Again, creative expression. And so you end up going to a quieter place where, again, people might say, what are you doing? You're not enjoying the party. And you're like, no. The thing that actually brings me peace and happiness requires silence. And so you're, there's going to be some lessening, uh, lessening? lessons around that <laughs> this month for you. Don't be afraid to disconnect uh, and, and, you know, give yourself some quiet, peaceful time. Okay? So then we have Virgo. We have clear quartz, purification. Virgo, you've had it. You're probably like, I am tired of everyone dumping their stuff on me. But part of that is your own fault. Okay? Because you are perfectionistic. We know that. Um, you might say, well, that's a stereotype. Yeah, I, okay, sure, but I know too many Virgos, okay? So you can't be coming around telling me that there's no truth in that, okay? <laughs> but this can be also purifying from your own overthinking, purifying from just being too busy, right? Just being uh, sort of pulled in too many different directions, um, too many expectations being put upon you. So... For you getting prepped in the next few months for the 1010 Energy Portal, this is what you're doing. You're clearing, you're releasing, but it has to do with a lot of emotional releasing, stress releasing, okay? And not, I hate to sit here and say, you know, don't let things get to you. I mean, it's easier said than done, but, <laughs> but really make sure that whatever is taking your energy actually deserves your energy, okay? So then we have Libra. Ancient Wisdom Crystal, Ancient Wisdom, I believe this came up in the general. So this is hitting you as a message extra, okay? Extra hard. So <laughs> tap into whatever, you know what it feels like? It feels, sorry, I, whenever I do messages, sometimes my face gets tingly. And I'm sitting there like, like <laughs> itch at my nose. Not attractive, but what can I do? Um, but this is that moment, you know, when you just kind of, uh, the world just sort of gets silent for you and you feel this glimmer of love. You know, you're tuning back into your soul, that soul connection to source. It's the type of love that doesn't really get to express fully in human form. It's too high vibrational. Something gets lost in translation. You might have a chance to reconnect with that. And it's very calming. It's very soothing. It's very balancing. And I do think that a lot of you from this wisdom place, you might make some drastic choices. You know, uh, I was just using the example of a big city. If you live in a big city, you might say, I don't want to live here anymore. And it's sudden. It's very sudden. It's sort of like, you know, I, I just see people say, where the heck did that come from? <laughs> right? Or, you know, you might be someone who always prided yourself on, uh, being single and then all of a sudden you're like I'm ready and someone comes in right so there's a lot of that going on a lot of what I've been using this bud buzzword or buzz term I should say of the plot twist listen I gotta acknowledge this there's tingling in my nose it's all under here it, it's just 
my face is just going. I think that is specific for you and your energy. A lot of opening up, a lot of realization, a lot of, you know, angelic experiences if you allow yourself to open up to that, okay? But it's like this sudden moment of clarity and you know exactly what you need to do. And I, I bet for like 99.9999% of you watching this, it's not the expected choice. It's something that just sort of occurs to you and then you get moving in that direction, okay? So then we have Scorpio, Rotocrosite Acceptance. This came up in the general as well. This is accepting the self. This is accepting, I can't control everything. This is accepting, this is temporary. That's a big one for you guys, okay? So if things are not, I don't wanna say that things aren't coming together for you. They are, but it's maybe outside of your normal routine maybe outside of your comfort zone. And so you feel like you're being squeezed to try something else, kind of being guided into a different direction. And you go, you know what? I just accept this. I'm not going to try to figure it out. I'm not going to fight it. I'm not going to, like if you thought, um, I don't know, I'm going to get married next May. And maybe you start getting to know your partner a little bit more and you're like, you know what? Maybe marriage, maybe we went into this too quickly. Let's just accept that we're not ready. Or let's just accept that this shouldn't happen right now. You feel me? So it could be something that comes up. This is the love crystal as well. Okay. Yeah, they're saying that some of you come to a place of acceptance for a partner. But really, it comes down to giving people space to be who they are. There's something that comes up that you're like, this is beyond my control. I have to accept that this is what it is. I don't. Have, it feels like you don't have the energy to push anymore. And I know a lot of us, I'm a Scorpio too, a lot of us have had a very rough three years. Like it just seemed like there was no end in sight. This is the I surrender <laughs> kind of moment. Like, okay, I got it. I just have to accept what, what things are right now. Again, knowing that they're temporary and that this is leading to something else. All right. So having some trust and faith in that as well. All right, Sagittarius, we have the Awakening Crystal, Emotional Healing. Again, I think we're now into, I shuffled this deck, but now we're into the ones that kept coming up for the general. So this is hitting you in like double time, okay? <laughs> so like really be focused on that emotional healing. There might be things that you have done very impulsively that have not only had you know, a detrimental effect on you, but on those you love. You might, some of you have ruined relationships just because they're saying of your curiosity. We're not touching that, but <laughs> so you might be very tempted, some of you to sit back and say, you know, I don't understand myself or beat yourselves up or whatever. And this is saying, you know, just, this is about emotional understanding. Okay. This is about understanding what drives you. Um, how are you built? How are you wired? What do you find acceptable that others maybe don't? Um, do you feel understood? You know, there are a lot of those types of things coming up for you this month. But it's, it's almost like self-acceptance, being okay with you, not trying to force. For you guys, some of you are trying to force others to kind of go along with your way of thinking. Um... Or maybe for some of you, this could be playing out like you don't feel heard. That could be another thing. But just watch for any conflicts, um, any fighting, anything of the sort. We have a storm moving in. My lights are flickering. The wind's picking up. Let's see how this goes. But anyway, <laughs> we're going to leave it there for you guys. And then we're going to get on to Capricorn, Fairy Stone, Fertility. All right. So what can this mean? Yes, this, is, this could absolutely mean that some of you are trying to start a family, like literally being fertile. Okay, but that's not going to be very many of you. This is, you know, connecting with nature and finding your creative life force through that. So there's some need to sort of detoxify. And also fairy stone always makes me think of, you know, magical, you know, what is that? Enchanted forest kind of feeling, right? So like, you know, get, allowing yourself to get into that childlike imagination. Allowing yourself, again, to get into the creative 
uh, tap into your creativity through nature. Okay, so that's a big part of this. The fertility would be being fertile with ideas, fertile with potential, okay? Living your potential. So for some of you, I think this is really gonna play out where maybe you've been so focused on a path or a process. You know, I'm, this is the, the direction I'm gonna go in. And then you go, but mm, I feel like this is, this is where my potential lies, right? Like, I know I've been working towards this, but let's try this now. And you start to take, it doesn't even have to be you changing jobs or anything like that. It's a mindset. Even if you change your mindset, you realize, okay, now I have more inspiration flowing through me. Now I'm not so stressed. I don't feel like I'm going against the grain. I don't feel like I'm trying to force something that wasn't meant to be. All right, so for Aquarius, we have pyromorphite patience. Part of this is because you need to rest, okay? So a lot, you've had a very difficult few years as well. The patience is saying things are playing out. So, but yeah, some things need to unfold before you can proceed. Now this might be things unfolding for you on your individual soul's contract, or it could be the people that you love, that you interact with, there could be things that have to sort of happen for them before any forward movement can happen. So here in July, I would not push on anything, <laughs> okay? First of all, it's gonna immediately exhaust you to the point where you go, I don't care. You know what, I don't care. You know what, I'm just not, you know, being apathetic about everything. So we want you to be inspired. It doesn't have to, you know, resting doesn't have to take a negative spin, right? It doesn't have to be like I throw my hands up in the air because I've just exhausted myself. Allow yourself to wait your turn. Okay, there's a little bit of that going on. I'm sorry to say that, but there's that energy there of it's just not quite the right timing for some of the things that you're working towards. So, for example, like I'm, I'm planning a move and I thought I was going to move in summer. Well, I learned eight years ago that moving in summer is about the dumbest thing that you can do. It's terrible. It's very busy. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> so I was going to move. And then there were all these little things that had to kind of come together. And so the move date got extended. And at first I was like, you know, I was going with the flow. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I'm, that, that's awesome. And then I started thinking about it. I'm like, whoa, that really, that really helps that it actually got extended because it'll be less stressful if I just give it a little more time. So you'll have more of the information, uh, things will be more in the flow. So that's the type of thing that we're talking about here. It's not a bad thing if things get delayed. All right, so for Pisces, we have, uh, we have uh, this, I'm getting thrown up. I say Amazonite, but I heard someone say Amazonite and now I'm thrown. Both words were trying to like jumble around in my brain. Sorry about it. Life purpose, so what's happening? This month, I feel like for you, it's a lot of just feeling off and, and kind of going, you know what, I, why, why, are, why are there so many obstacles? That's been a big thing for a lot of people. Why are there so many obstacles? Why don't I feel happy? Why don't I feel fulfilled? We'll go back and listen to the general part of that. There's emotional healing there. There's tapping back into your wisdom. But something happens from a calm space that's... Amazonite. <laughs> Amazonite. I want to say Amazonite. I, I always said Amazonite. I don't, I, anyway, uh, this helps you get that clarity, but in a peaceful, subtle epiphany kind of way where it's like, oh, oh gosh, I've gotten so hung up on making sure this, this, and this happened. I got off track with my dreams. It's that. Okay. It's getting back to things that really matter to you. Um, that bring you a lot of peace, bring you a lot of joy, and are helping you fulfill your soul's contract. Your life path and purpose is not career. It's not just career, okay? It's multi-layered, a lot of things go into it, and a lot of people sort of ignore, um, you know, they just want the career goal to unfold. They ignore everything else that has to go into it. This, if you allow it, will unfold all the details around the all-encompassing life path and purpose. Okay, so we're gonna leave it there for everybody now. I'm sending you all so much love and take care. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ow. <laughs>
hurt herself, she hurt herself. 